So imagine this, AI propaganda being used to assuade voters left or right, doesn't matter which side of the aisle you are, they're targeting you and they're making you want to fight or making you believe this or believe that or spreading misinformation. Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi film, but it is far from it. We're actually seeing these kind of operations play out where threat actors are using AI to influence campaigns and influence elections. We're seeing that here in the US and I'm pretty sure other countries are probably being influenced. But OpenAI just took down a bunch of them. Let's talk about it in this week's episode. Today we are facing an unprecedented array of data breaches, hacking attempts, and surges in digital crime. Why is there such a widespread amount and how little is noticed in our everyday lives? Malware, dark sites, brute forcing, zero days, script kiddies, and nation state hackers are all on the rise. Learn more about the threats we face and gain a bit more knowledge than yesterday. Hey everyone, another episode of Exploit Brokers is coming to you now. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Laudo. If you can please hit the subscribe, the bell icon, and the like, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps us get this video out to as many people as we can to help spread the awareness. If you're on a podcast platform like Spotify or Apple Podcast, please give us a follow and a review. And with that said, let's jump into it. So in an article by The Hacker News, OpenAI blocks Iranian influence operations using ChatGPT for US election propaganda. Again, straight out of a dystopian film, but we're seeing it here play out live. OpenAI on Friday said it banned a set of accounts linked to what it said was an Iranian covert influence operation that leveraged ChatGPT to generate content that, among other things, focused on the upcoming US presidential election. Now, just because OpenAI took them down doesn't mean they're probably not doing other stuff, right? We're seeing the proliferation of tons of large language models. If you have something like a 4090 or any of that kind of equipment, you can easily run it. If you can get a cloud provider to rent a 4090 or one of the beefier 48 gigabyte VRAM cards, then you could easily run some of these more performant large language models to do text generation and code and other things. And we're seeing these models get more advanced with time and more refined as well. This week, we identified and took down a cluster of ChatGPT accounts that were generating content for a covert Iranian influence operation identified as Storm 2035, OpenAI said. The operation used ChatGPT to generate content focused on a number of topics, including commentary on candidates on both sides in the US presidential election, which it then shared via social media accounts and websites. So here, it's not that they're trying to influence one way or the other, they seem to just want to try to influence in general. Now, I haven't been able to get any samples of what they were, of what kind of comments or what kind of articles were being described. And there's a little bit of talk about it here on the, on the actual article, but nothing that I've seen where I can give a direct opinion. So let's keep going. The artificial intelligence company said the content did not achieve any meaningful engagement with a majority of the social media posts received negligible to no likes, shares, and comments. It further noted that it found little evidence the long-form articles created using ChatGPT were shared on social media platforms. So ChatGPT, like any large language model, is really good at creating text content. Granted, you have like the image generations or the recent video or text to video kind of uh, items that came out, and that is one part of it. But what we're seeing being used heavily is the text-based, the code-based large language models, because they seem to be the more mature if you will, of the technology. And what we're seeing here is that they're using that to generate social media content. Now, there is a lot of valid reasons to use AI to help content creators either generate, brainstorm, or you know div do different things in the content generation space. That's a different talk for a different day. Some people have one opinion one way or the other. But here, you're seeing threat actors that are using AI and LLMs to actually create malicious or I'm going to say malicious, but to create content for a malicious purpose, which is to try to get some viewers and get people onto that. Now, there is some more context in the article, and I believe it's being actually done in a way that they're using it for traffic for other malicious purposes, more than just influencing campaigns. But I think that's just one of the many outcomes that we're seeing from this. OpenAI said its chat GPT tool was used to create comments in English and Spanish 
which were then posted on a dozen accounts on X and one on Instagram. Some of the comments were generated by asking its AI models to rewrite comments posted by other social media users. The operation generated content about several topics, mainly the conflict in Gaza, Israel's presence at the Olympic Games, and the US presidential election, and to a lesser extent politics in Venezuela, the rights of the Latinx community in the US, both in Spanish and English, and Scottish independence, OpenAI said. So on there, we're seeing that, you know, it's they are taking comments and re-spinning it, right? The same way that you would go and see what people are commenting and just keep commenting that. But they're using AI as a way to automate that. Where you go in, you see what the comment section is saying, and you just kind of re-spin that and put it on as a way to make accounts look legitimate. A lot of bots, and I'm pretty sure some of you, if you're still on Facebook, if you're active on there, if you're active on Twitter, or any of these other places, you'll come across bots, right? I, on my accounts, I see dozens of bots, probably within a couple minutes of logging into any of them. And you've seen even like on Facebook, most likely, where you go in, someone posts an obviously AI-generated image, and you have dozens of people responding to it in the most bot fashion. And you probably are getting some legit people who respond thinking that's what everyone else is responding, right? The, the effect of social pressure. But here we're seeing that the bots are using English and Spanish and commenting on different things. They interspersed their political content with comments about fashion and beauty, possibly to appear more authentic or in an attempt to build a following. They're using these to build pseudo-social media influencers and garner some traffic. Now, all this kind of goes on. Um, it is worth noting that Microsoft has further warned of an uptick in the foreign malign influence activity targeting the US election over the past six months from both Iranian and Russian networks, the latter of which have been traced back to clusters tracked as Ruza Flood, aka Doppelganger, Storm 1516, and Storm 1841, aka Rybar. Doppelganger spreads and amplifies fabricated, fake, or even legitimate information across social networks, French cybersecurity company Harfang Lab said. To do so, social networks accounts post links that initiate an obfuscated chain of redirects leading to final content websites. Now, this is kind of one of the ultimate goals for a lot of these uh, threat actors, right? They're either trying to get social media presence on something to influence one way or the other. They're trying to get people to click so that way they can get traffic to their illegitimate websites. They're trying to do email harvesting so they can try to take over accounts to keep the operations going. There's a lot of reasons why they may be doing this, but ultimately threat actors are any state-sponsored entity that is doing the bidding of the state that's sponsoring them, thus the name state-sponsored. If we keep going, we can see a little bit into it. However, indications are that Propaganda Network is shifting its tactics in response to aggressive enforcement, increasingly using non-political posts and ads and spoofing non-political and entertainment news outlets like Cosmopolitan, The New Yorker, and Entertainment Weekly in an attempt to evade detection per meta. And ultimately, this is even what we see with malware or any other kind of malicious software that goes around. You don't want to get detected. The moment you get detected, all your efforts, your infrastructure and things kind of go down the drain. Think about how many bots or things they have set up, how many accounts they've been, you know, nurturing. Because you can't just create an account a week ago and start trying to spread a bunch of misinformation. Anyone clicks through, your account is only a couple days old. What I've seen a lot of bots do is they'll create the account, they'll start to do these fake interactions with other accounts and try to make them look authentic for a couple months or for a couple days or weeks or etc. And then they'll actually start to use the fake account for its intended purpose under the guise of, you know, this is maybe just someone who believes in a certain way. When ultimately it's just a puppet for these threat actors. It's a puppet account. The social media company, which has disrupted 39 influence operations from Russia, 30 from Iran, and 11 from China since 2017 across its platforms said it uncovered six new networks from Russia, four, Vietnam, one, and the US, one, in the second quarter of 2024. Since May, Doppelganger resumed its attempts at sharing links to its domains, but at a much lower rate. Again, they're trying to not get caught, they're trying to have their assets stay alive as long as possible. Now, a lot of what we're seeing here is obfuscation techniques that are also being put into play, right? If they're changing from non-political posts to different entertainment stuff, then it becomes more obvious that they weren't necessarily, not, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them were obviously not 
caring about the election, it's just the hot topic that you're most likely to click through. Some of them may have been trying to influence in one way or another. Uh, by reading this article, I don't have a complete picture of all the stuff that happens, right? By nature of there's a lot of threat actors in a lot of these campaigns. And even within one threat actor, they could be trying to use these campaigns to influence and these campaigns to try to compromise accounts. It's ultimately a cat and mouse game. And when we're seeing here, we're seeing obfuscation techniques. For example, we've also seen them experiment with multiple redirect hops, including tiny URL link shortening service to hide the final destination behind the links and deceive both meta and our users in an attempt to avoid detection and lead people to their off-platform websites. They're using essentially redirection, right? Because a lot of the times when you preview a link, you see the first layer of that link. Um, we see malware and phishing people use this as well, or these entities use it as well, right? Because you'll get a something that looks like Linktree, right? Or this other tiny URL, better said. And the tiny URL just has some garbled 12, 15 characters at the end, which when you visit it on their side, they pull up the actual URL that they want you to go to, and then they'll redirect where the browser just kind of refreshes to this new link. Well, they're doing multiple levels of that. And I'm assuming it's because if you're using bots to try to check links, you're not going to go infinitely because of the risk of uh, a cycles, right? If you go from A to B to C and C goes back to A, then your bot's going to be going in an infinite thing until you figure out a depth or some kind of cutoff. And that's what I think they're counting on, right? If they do several levels of redirection and obfuscation, Eventually, the bot's going to be like, well, okay, this is fine. It doesn't look like it's a malicious link that I think it is, when in reality, it is. So if we continue forward, the development comes as Google's Threat Analysis Group, or TAG, also said this week that it had detected and disrupted Iranian-backed spear phishing efforts aimed at compromising the personal accounts of high-profile users in Israel and the US, including those associated with presidential campaigns. Again, if they can compromise an extremely high-profile account, even if they can make it look right, you see this all the time with different X accounts or YouTube accounts that get taken over. A YouTube account gets taken over. They put a fake Elon Musk uh, shilling some kind of meme coin to try to pump and dump it. And if they can take over a very popular YouTube's account and create this false campaign, they might get a lot of people who actually fall for it. They could easily reap the benefits. Well, here, if you're trying to get access to these high profile accounts, What's to say they're not trying to do the same and abuse the reach that some of these people have, right? If the POTUS account from the US or the SCOTUS account from the US was taken over, if uh, Kamala Harris's or President Trump or any of these other different people's accounts were taken over, the reach that they have is insane because they're in the spotlight. And if you can get one of these accounts or even Elon Musk or, you know, once you start going into celebrities or all that, they're specifically talking about U.S. presidential campaigns, which is why I bring up these people. But anytime you have a high reach account, whether it's a some kind of politician or some kind of movie star or TV show star or whatever, then those become extremely damaged because a lot of the time people will just believe it because it's a quote unquote authority, right? This is someone who you see and know, well, obviously it's this person. But if it gets taken over, you won't necessarily know it's been taken over. A lot of high ranking people don't manage their own social media accounts. It's just kind of what's known. So the activity has been attributed to a threat actor codenamed APT42, Advanced Persistent Threat Actor 42, a state sponsored hacking crew affiliated with Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC. It's known to share overlaps with another intrusion set known as Charming Kitten, aka Mint Sandstorm. App42 uses a variety of tactics as part of their email phishing campaign, including hosting malware, phishing pages, and malicious redirects, the tech giant said. They generally try to abuse services like Google, Sites, Drive, Gmail, and others. Dropbox, OneDrive, and others for their purposes. So, for these purposes. So, that's kind of what you see, right? You have a malicious file that gets hosted on Dropbox or OneDrive or one of those. You click it because, hey, it's a Google Drive link when in reality, it's some kind of malware or something else. This just seems to be one more reach of what they're doing. It's it's a lot of what these threat actors do. They never really do just a single thing. It's think of it like a malicious company, right? They have several kind of goals, whether in this case, 
it's make money, spread their bots, and try to influence elections, or it's gain accounts, take over, and keep spreading to kind of do something for elections, etc. There's a lot of things to these apt actors, and their motives are not always very clear. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the time, their motives are very clear. But sometimes you start seeing a bunch of little crumbs, and you wonder what their ultimate goals are, which is why they're called advanced persistent threats, right? They're state sponsored. You can assume that their goals align with whatever entity backs them, whether it's Iran or Russia. But at the end of the day, we don't know 100% for certain unless there's like some leaked docs or some other stuff that happens. I know that recently there's been some apt actors from China and their stuff got leaked. So at that point, you can start to see infrastructure, goals, and other you know stuff that can kind of give you a better idea of what they've been trying to do, why they've been trying to do it, and so on. But ultimately, guys, this is just one of the cool things. In this case, there's nothing for users to know or users to do. In this case, ChatGPT or OpenAI was the one who blocked those accounts. But what's to say that those accounts are going to pop up or they're going to just offload the AI to something that can't be shut down like a OpenAI account? It really is just an interesting piece of information. I thought you guys would like it. I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Louder with Exploit Brokers, and I'll see you in the next one.